Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary with the Get Some Podcast. And my guest this week is... <laughs> this motherfucking Gary. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary Owen with the Get Some Podcast. Uh, this has been a long week, interesting week. Um, I apologize to everyone in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I I was supposed to have shows there last week, Thursday through Sunday, and I get a call Thursday night. Someone close to me was having emergency surgery, and I had I had to leave. I I was like, whoa, it's a weird, I, I've, in my entire 25 year career of doing stand up, I've never canceled a show, uh, never missed a show. I've, I think I've been, been late probably two times in 25 years to a show. And to, I'm talking about canceling while you're there. Of course, I've gotten movies and, and, TV gigs or stuff like that where you have to cancel, but to actually be in a city, about to go on stage, get a phone call, and then you still got to perform. And then I, I swear Thursday, if anybody was at my show in Philly Thursday, first 20 minutes are a blur because I was on autopilot. I was like, because your thoughts are with the person in the hospital and you're, you're sitting here going... Man, everything's going through your brain. Like, I got, I got to try to get an airline ticket. I got, I got to get out of here. And so, did the show. It was good. I get off stage. Uh, got a, got an update. Everything seemed to be somewhat stable. And then, thank God, everything worked out. There was one. There was a six fifteen a.m. flight. One seat left. Got on it. Uh, landed. Got to the hospital. Uh, just before the person goes into surgery and, oh, and then the surgery went okay. Everybody, everybody's, okay. everybody's okay. But yeah, so, uh, hopefully by the time this airs, I'm going to speak in, into existence. We are going to have a makeup date. I, I, I told Philadelphia I can do, um, August 3rd through the 5th at helium. And I, I should know. Uh, I record this a day prior to airing. So hopefully by the time this airs, it'll be confirmed. So always go to my website, uh, GaryOwen.live for my schedule updates. Uh, but that was um, ugh, Amber Alert. Sorry about that. Unbelievable. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you always hear the, the saying, you never know what people are going through. Uh, so be nice to everybody. And I think when you go through something like I went through this week, uh, that really resonates because it's weird. Like I'm in, the, I've been in the hospital for, I still got my ding bangs on. I didn't realize I got my bands on from the hospital. Jeez. I mean, I literally just left, just checked out. Uh, but even, even being in the hospital and just going down to a coffee shop or, cafeteria and get some food and stuff um people recognize you and you still gotta put a smile on your face even though you're you know you're not where you normally are mentally uh and i i keep that you know i always keep that in the back of my head like man if if what i'm going through and and everything seems to be stable in my life now that the surgery's over and it was successful uh there's other people at the hospital too going through stuff and just just being nice to them and smiling or whatever, maybe that could help them their day. Uh, yeah. So, but every everything's fine. Everybody's fine. Uh, so it was it was it was uh it's, it's been a long week because you're when you're in the hospital like that and you're sleeping in the hospital. Uh, the whole week I have no idea really what's going on in the world. Not watching TV. You're, you're, you're on your phone, but you're just kind of like, you're looking for distractions. You're not looking for 
news outlets or look at the, look, you're not you're not thinking of the, I'd say you're not thinking of the podcast. I'd tell you that. You're just looking at videos that'll make you smile, make you laugh, uh, keep your mind off stuff. I, I still go to ESPN a lot. That's thank God for that website because uh, I'm such a sports fanatic. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's it's, I've, it's like when 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 you're in the military and you go to boot camp, and the two months I was in boot camp, it's like I, I still there's things that'll come up. And that was, man, 30 years ago. And I'll be like, when did that happen? And I'll just be like, oh, I was in boot camp. That's why I never heard of that. I can't remember that scandal. Uh, so yeah, this, is one of those, this is one of those weeks where I'm sure a year from now, I'll be like, that, when did that happen? Or even next month, I'll be like, so-and-so did that? You're just kind of out the loop completely because your whole focus is making sure that person gets better. Uh, so... Yeah, I was uh, that was a, it was it was a crazy week, but everything everything's fine. Everybody's good. So, you know, count my blessings. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was it was, it was an interesting week, and so hopefully, and, and shouts out the Helium Comedy Club. Man, they just didn't give me any like. It's funny in this business. You you have comedy clubs, and at the end of the day, it's still a business. And so here I am. We've got a lot of tickets sold. They're looking at a great weekend. And um, I'm very sorry about that. My phone is on silent. Okay. So I got to tell them Thursday, like, hey, I'm out. I got to leave in the morning. And it's really like no regard towards them. Like, you know, I'm just gone. And when I told them the reasoning, they was like, oh, okay, okay. Man, such a. They they were so professional at Helium in, in Philadelphia that I was like, dude, I'll, I'll cancel another weekend at another club to make this up to you. And hopefully that'll be August 3rd to, to the 5th, I hope. I hope it happens because I just want to – really, I want to go back and say thanks to the to the owners, to the GMs, to the wait staff, just everybody. And then the, the cool thing that came out of this is – it's funny, last week I got on my podcast and I talked about the guys working with me now, uh, T-Robe and Rob. And T-Robe, my opener, he he covered for me. The, the club was like, well, they were going to call somebody from New York to take my place. And I said, my guy can do it. My opener can do it. And T-Robe, uh, he got the headline. So he got the – they gave him a good deal. They were generous. So he got to basically triple his money. <laughs> and then I'm telling him, I was like, yo – he, I'm I'm texting him with updates, you know, how to go last night, everybody cool, and you know, I guess I don't know what how the club rectified it. What what I heard, and I could be wrong, I heard the club was giving people options of reimbursement, obviously, or you don't get reimbursed, your ticket is still valid when I come back, and you could still come to the show this past weekend and, and see T Row for free. You know, count that. So Go see two comedy shows for the price of one or just get your money back. And uh, I feel bad for those people that come from out of town because I, I did – once I posted on my social media, I did have a few people say, uh, I was coming from D.C. to see you. And I was like, oh, gosh. You feel bad for those people. Uh, but nobody gave me like – of course, you got the, the smart asses. Uh, but then – I'd say 95% of the comments that I read and came across was all positive, like handle your business. We know life happens. And, uh, and T-Rope got to triple his money. He got the headline for the weekend and I'm getting updates. Like, how was it? How was it crowd? And then I said, are you do meet and greets? And he was like, no. And I go, are you crazy, bro? I said, dude, do meet and greets. It's, 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 it's a, ten, it's tenfold for s someone like, at his level, or even and anybody do meet and greets. I go, it's it's a couple extra dollars in your pocket if you do a meet and greet, and more importantly, you're getting that close interaction with the fans that they they never forget, and then they get a picture with you. And I I, I put it to him like this: I said, imagine more recently uh, if you got a picture with Matt Rife three years ago, or you got a picture with uh, Dave Chappelle twenty five years ago. I go. Imagine they hadn't really blown yet 
but you went and saw them, and you got a picture because they had a meet and greet. Now you got something that's that that's of value and really means something. You can always tell people, "I knew it when. I knew it before he blew." Because we never know who's going to blow in this business. And he was like, "Oh, okay, okay." And he he had a nice little he got a nice little turnout with the meet and greets. Got a few extra dollars in his pocket, and people, you know, they feel good. They're, it's very. Um, spur of the moment meet and greet. You, they, they'll do it right in the moment, and then it's it's just a good way to make a couple extra dollars. You're not going to get rich off meet and greets, but it's still a cool interaction with the fans. And I I, I look at it like, man, I I can't imagine if I w- went to a concert, and whether it's a musician, comedian, whatever, and people are like, hey, you can meet them afterwards. You know, twenty bucks, ten bucks, thirty bucks, depending on where you're at. I'd be like, yeah, I'd, I'd probably do it. And so got a, a couple extra dollars, a couple extra fans, and, you know, he's uh, he's all fired up now. And, and now that he's – he did an hour all weekend, I said, man, wait wait till you go back with me. 30 minutes is going to seem like nothing. And so, uh, yeah, so that benefited him. And so, yeah, again, shouts out to Helium uh, and Philly, man. You guys really just – a you ran it like an A club – did me feel guilty because let me tell you, some there's some clubs that, were, that will remain nameless because I don't know if they do it. But if I was top of my head, there's some clubs I'm looking at. Like if I would have been at that club last weekend and had to cancel shows like I did, I guarantee you they'd be calling my agency or my manager going, Well, we spent this on advertising or we did this and he's not getting this money and da da da. And I don't, I don't even know what I made Thursday. It doesn't even matter. I was just like, uh, what, whatever. I just got, I gotta get out of here. And so, and they, and the fact that they were like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll try to find a makeup date as soon as possible. I was like, dude, let me know, let me know, and I will move some stuff around to accommodate you the way you guys treated me. So, yeah. So, getting back to last week, what a crazy week. Uh, since I've been out the loop, last week I had a blonde moment. I'm sitting here talking about Comic View coming back, and I'm naming all the comedians on the who's on the new Comic View, and I'm sitting here looking up Rubber Band Man, and I'm like, oh my god, it was Ti. I'm an idiot. I just wasn't thinking the way it was written on on the the BEC website. It looked like Rubber Band Man was a separate comic because there's a comic called Rod Man, and there used to be a comic called Sandman, and so I'm thinking there's a comic called Rubber Band Man, and basically <laughs> they wrote it up like T.I.'s on it, and then they said, list of comics, Rubber Band Man, and I went, and I, I, I was reading some of the comments on social media, and some guy goes, dude, I'm literally yelling out my car right now. I'm yelling, driving, and I've been there. Like, when you got somebody looking some up, and they give bad information or something that ain't right, you're yelling at the top of your lungs. <laughs> so I'm sure someone was on the way to work going, it's T.I., bro! It's T.I. So, my fault. Had a had a moment last week, but why? Well, why I was in the hospital though? Uh, okay, a couple things that I did see online. One, I don't know what's going on with the NFL right now, but it's a sad state of affairs when none of the running backs can get paid. Like no team is giving running backs long term contracts. It was Saquon Barkley. It was uh, Taylor from the Colts, uh, Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. They're all just getting – they're basically getting franchised or they're getting one-year deals. And I don't know the solution, but it seems like that position is almost getting phased out as far as, like, big contracts. And it's sad because – you know, it's the the way the NFL is now. It's all geared up for quarterbacks to make the money, and they deserve it. Now, any, let me tell you something. If you're in the NFL, you deserve every dime you get for what you put your body through. So I'm all about get all the money you can. I never look at somebody signing a big deal and they fumble the ball or they throw an interception or they miss a tackle. I'm like, that dude's making twenty million a year. Miss that tackle? I wish. I, I hate when people be like, I wish they will give me twenty million a year. I said, yeah, but they won't. Because you suck, and you're not ever going to be in the NFL, and you're not good enough. That's why you don't get that type of money. And 
I those those people that are always in like pro ball players' pockets, it's always like the broke people. It's never like people doing well in life, doing decent. It's always people bitter and mad, and you're in NFL, and it's not. It's just not. I could care less what people make. I just, I just, I don't care what people do off the field. As long as you can ball, I don't care. And you know, sports they they let people's. Uh, we 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 know how much money they make, and we, and we and the sad part is we judge them accordingly off of it. And so, uh, I just I, I think it's sad. I don't know how we can fix it. I don't really have a solution with the running back position, but man, those guys get hit hard every play that they're in. I do think it's smart to have two good running backs because it's such a position where you take such a pounding. I don't think there's another position where you take as much pounding as running back. And you got such a short window to make your money, like five or six years. So I don't know if there's a way you can make incentives, uh, incentive-based. I just I don't have the answer. But I think it's sad that they put their bodies through so much. And even even the, the Bengals, Joe Mixon, he took a pay cut. And granted, he's still making quite a bit of money, but he took a pay cut to stay with the team. And so he's literally going to make – Nine ten million dollars less over the next two years, uh, because he wanted to, one stay on the team and one he probably I'm telling you his agent and him probably is like look in the open market, you're better off staying with the Bengals. Uh, yeah, plus he's got roots there. He bought a house. Uh, he he he's on a team that's winning. Ain't nothing like playing on a winning team. I always look at like cost of living isn't that bad. Uh. You're gonna get bon. You're probably going to playoffs. You're gonna get bonuses there, which leads if you get the Super Bowl win and you ball out, that leads to endorsements. So, it was a smart move on his play. And also, you know the way they structure these contracts is it's so back heavy. Like you'll get big signing bonus, and then you only make like I'm making this up. You'll make a couple million the first two years of the contract, but then like your third, fourth, fifth year, that's when your money really jumps, but that's when the teams can cut you. So they don't have to pay that. So uh, he's on that backside of his contract. I think he signed a five-year deal or something. So Joe's looking at it like, I'm still making more than I probably did my last couple years, but I'm making less than what I thought. But he signed such a big deal. He's still going to be okay, but. It's just sad that they, it has to come to that, and, and and I think Joe Mixon did that to to open up room because they're gonna they're gonna have to pay Jamar, they're gonna have to pay T, they're gonna have to pay Joe, and it looks like they all want him to stay. So that's also why he did it. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't have the answer. But I think it's sad. I think it's sad that these running backs, man, because man, and then like you know the, the glamour positions is wide receiver, running back, and uh, quarterback. And wide receivers are getting paid, quarterbacks are getting paid, but then they're running backs, man. And I think it's just because they take a pound and you get such a short window uh, to. Because anytime you see running back, they get too many carries. It's like tread on the tires. You can't get the you can't get those miles back. And then there's such a there's such a decline. And when it happens, it happens fast, boy, with running backs. And that's that's where it's coming from. But I still think you know we gotta we gotta somehow structure this where they can get guaranteed money uh, and so they don't have to go back and do stuff like this. And speaking of guaranteed money, in my line of work, the, the actors went on strike last week. So, you know, I got I got that movie coming out August 18th back on the strip. I don't know if we're going to have a premiere now or I don't know. I don't even know if I'm allowed to really promote it. I think I just did, but I don't even know. Like, I think... That's another instance where, in my line of work, it's you got actors that'll be on like all these shows, but it's it, work is inconsistent. And if you don't make a certain amount of money, you don't qualify for medical insurance, and that's a big thing. You can have you could you could make six seven figures one year and literally make zero the next, and it doesn't roll over, so you don't qualify for medical insurance. You got to make that every year instead of just saying, hey. He made this much last year, so technically he should qualify for the next five years for medical insurance. So, And it's so top-heavy. You got people that at the top of the food chain are making so much money, and then you could have the third lead in a movie, 
and they don't, you know, they can't even, <laughs> they can't even like pay the rent uh, after it's all said and done. And uh, so it's, it's good. I hope I, it's going to benefit. I think our residual checks will go up. Uh, there's also the AI, um, the AI, AI component in this. I'm not bright enough to know enough about it to speak on it. But I know that's a big part of this. You can't be like making films with Tom Cruise's likeness. And it's not Tom Cruise. Uh, this AI stuff is scary. I don't think we're talking about enough, honestly. I, th- I mean, the whole movie, the whole reason the Terminator was made was the machines were smarter than the humans. And that's where we're headed. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. This podcast might be me, and it, but it ain't me. I don't know. Uh, so all that's going into play with this strike. But the main thing is just to have – just to t- take care of those actors because it's, it's such a peace of mind. You don't want to be going into auditions thinking, God, I got to – if I don't get this, this might be it for me. That's why – that's why – Drug addiction so high and suicide so high and depression so high uh, in in the entertainment field. Uh, so hopefully this alleviates some of it. Obviously, uh, that's the that's the that's what we signed up for in this business, though, um, is the uncertainty. It's and I think I was talking to Jamie Foxx years ago and he said it's the biggest temp job in the world is entertainment business. There's no real job security in it. It's it's a weird thing when you do a movie because any, anybody that's ever done a movie, you know, you get the part and that's the rush the day you get a part in a movie. It's not when you're on set. It's not when you're uh, when the movie comes out. It's the day your agent or manager calls and says, you got the part. That's the rush. And then once you get on set, it's work. And then by the time the movie comes out, you're nine, ten months removed then it's just like, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then it's so weird. Like the last day on set, as soon as you shoot your last scene and you're done, everybody claps for you. Like the director, the actors, the grips, the lighting, catering, they all give you a big clap. And they would be like, all right, that's a wrap on Gary Owen. And everybody claps and you shake hands and kiss some babies. And I'm like, all right. And you realize, oh, shit, I'm unemployed. I was like, we should do that the first day of filming. The whole welcome to set, Gary Owens here. And then, okay. But the day you rap, you're clapping that I'm unemployed. I I understand it, but I'm like, this isn't really time to celebrate. <laughs> I remember the first movie I ever did, held up with Jamie Foxx. We go to Canada. We shoot the movie. I come back and... I just remember I come back to L.A. They do have a car service. Take me back to my apartment. And I get back to my apartment. And it was like, there's my bed with no bed frame. There's my TV on the box that I bought it in. This was four flat screens. And that was it. And I had a dresser. And I went, oh, this is reality. And I'm checking my phone. Nobody's calling. I just thought when you did a movie, I thought you came back to L.A. and the phone starts ringing off the hook. And they're like, welcome back. Let's get the next movie. That's not how it works. <laughs> that was a reality check. It was three years before I got another movie. So the first one was Daddy. The first one was Held Up. And my second movie was Daddy Daycare with Eddie Murphy. It was three years in between. Oh, that's crazy to even think about. Um, so. Yeah, I always thought that was weird plugging, uh, clapping and doing all that stuff before uh, <laughs> before your next gig. It'd be different if you knew uh, where your next gig was. Give it up for Gary Owen. He's leaving this movie and headed to Mission Impossible. Yeah, that's a reason to clap. But now he's going back to his apartment and his phone's not going to ring. He's getting a not, not another movie for three years. Give it up for Gary. He's going to be struggling. <laughs> So it was always weird to me. Uh, so another thing I was reading up this week, which I thought it's literally one of the, it's an interesting story. So if, you, if you're not familiar, this, this gentleman, Adam 22, uh, 
he marries this girl, Lena the Plug. And Adam 22, he's the host. And I don't think it's a, I think something happened, but it was the No Jumper podcast, was what he was really known for. And, but he marries this, first he's dating, and then he marries this chick called Lena the Plug. And she's a porn chick. And I'm not going to judge if that, that's your life, that's your life. So the, the, the basis of their whole relationship was, they do, they, they, he does the podcast and they, he gets great numbers. He's had some great guests, uh, some obviously like any podcast, some's more entertaining than others, but you know, he's, he's very active on social media. He's got a big following, but they, I guess they do, they do only fans. They do porn together, him and his girlfriend, now wife, Lena, the plug. And one thing Adam 22 always said was, yeah, we'll do, we just do girl on girl and I can join in, but she don't do other guys. And then. They they get married, and then he wants to. Then she she sleeps with another dude, and not just a dude, big old black dude. And I was like, dang, you just <laughs> you went to the like top of the food chain as far as like stereotypical. D- don't want that vision of somebody sleeping with your wife. It's just a hung brother, just tearing it up. <laughs> That's where they went with it. I was like, I would have probably got a. I, if I'm going off stereotypes, I'm getting a five foot two Asian. If I'm going to let my already in porn business wife sleep with somebody, I'm going for a really short Asian dude. And I'm going to roll the dice that he doesn't beat the brakes off of her. And so we, they, it's, there's so many layers of this. For one, like, I thought it's interesting that you, you let your wife sleep with another dude. And I was just like, uh, and you gotta, you gotta watch that. That's out there on the internet. And, there, and it's one thing, like, I never want to think of whoever I'm with, whether when I was married, my ex was it, if I'm, when I'm dating, just anybody I'm with, I don't ever want that. I don't ever want to see, obviously, you know, they sleep with other people. I mean, people, there's all I've never, I don't think I've ever slept with a virgin. So I know there's people before me. I just don't want to think about it. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to vision it. I don't want to know anybody you slept with. Really, I'm just going. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just gonna tell myself it's never happened. But so he lets his big old brother. What, what's what's this guy's name? Uh, it's, uh, it's so. It's just so odd. Jason Love, uh, big big old brother, and he lets his wife do it, and he's so happy about it. At first, like he buys her a, a new car, he's hyping her up, like this is what she wanted. We're we're cool with it. And listen, I ain't I'm not judging at all. If that's your lifestyle, that's your lifestyle. I got I got friends that have an open relationship. I got I got gay friends. I got I I mean I got all kinds of friends and everybody's different and what they allow in their relationship and what's cool. And it's just like uh but this one He's cool with it. And all of a sudden, a couple days ago, he comes out like threatening this Jason Love. Like, I let you bone my wife. <laughs> He's like, and now you're getting reckless how you're talking about her. I hired you for a reason. I let you do this for a reason. We trusted you. And he goes, and if you keep talking reckless, you can get touched. I got people in these streets of LA. And then he, then he does this. And I got secrets, Brock. I know your secrets. You don't want to let me, you don't want me to let that out. Now, when somebody says something like that, when you're when you when you're dealing with porn, now you got to read between the lines. That to me says Jason Love probably has homo has done a homosexual scene or done something with another dude. That's the only thing I can come up with. Either that or he's a drug addict. So that's the only two things I can come up with. Uh, so that it's the threat and everything. And now he's mad, and all because Jason Love. He gets he gets on some interview and he's like, yeah, you know, she's not used to having her uh, her stuff tore out like that. You know, she was used to to Adam. He ain't really he ain't tearing it up. You know, she ain't used to something this big and able to work it and stuff like that. And I go, ah, that's that's why. Like, why did you choose him? <laughs> I'm not choosing that. And so then I don't. I, I the whole thing is just. It's just odd. The whole thing. The threats afterward from Adam 22 to Jason Love. The fact that he's okay with his wife getting 
getting towed up by some big brother. Oh, it's weird because a couple weeks ago I talked about that movie X. When I did my my little movie review, and and that was I, literally I was talking about that within that movie. I was talking about how the the camera guy, his girlfriend, went in and slept with the character Kid Cudi was playing, and he he was playing a, a well hung brother. And sure enough, it like played out the next week live. But listen, if your goal was to boost like your profile on on Pornhub and OnlyFans and everything else, all this worked because I read I got online and Adam twenty two his uh, his Pornhub searches up four thousand sixty eight percent. Lane of the plug. Porn sub hurt, porn hub search, 2010%. Not a hundred, thousands. So if you look at it that way, it worked. Whatever they were looking at, it worked. Whatever they, they're getting searched, then they're, if hopefully they're getting paid. And I'm talking about it. So in the end, whatever, good or bad, I mean, really nothing bad happened because he was okay with the guy sleeping with his wife. He knew he was packing. I don't know if the guy's packing or not. I'm never. I'm not gonna go search him for that. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, and then uh, he was okay with all of it until he started talking about, and that that's an ego thing. That's a male ego thing. Is talking about how she's not used to getting told down like that. And then he was like, I didn't mean to finish in her either. It's just you know, it just happened. He was, he was you know, he's cocky with it, uh, feeling himself a little bit. And it just was weird because it was all good like a few days ago. And then this happened. Uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know if I could. Ugh. I don't know if I could. I guess everybody's different, though. I don't know if I could be with somebody in the porn industry because all their stuff's out there. You can just Google their name and sex, sex, sex. And you see it getting every hole getting filled up. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I got to I have to put a block on my computer of everything she's ever been in. If that was the case. Uh, yeah. I've, I've never been like that. I don't know. I don't want, I ain't in the swingers. I've had friends that went to swinger stuff and I went to a swinger club one time in my life and it was by accident. And I could never, I could never tell the story cause I was married in the past, but it was so by accident. And I, it was like, Whoa, so I'll never forget I was in I might as well share it now. I I was in Miami, Florida. And this was well over 20 years ago. Uh because if anybody's been to the Florida improv, this is when it was in Coconut Grove and it was upstairs. So this is man, it might have been more than, yeah, it was like 20 some years ago. And I get done with my show, and this woman and dude come up and they go, Hey, you want to come to our club tomorrow? And I was like, all right, I ain't doing nothing tomorrow. And so then we exchanged info and they said they owned it. I was like, all right. So we exchanged numbers. I get a text. What do you drink? And I was like, at that time, I remember I was drinking Captain Morgan. I said, Captain Morgan. So I'm thinking I'm going to a club. I'm about to get bottle service. They hooking me up. And I'm not even, I'm not even like huge back then. I'm okay, but I'm height. And then, so me and my opener, we, uh, at the time, it's not Rob, it's not T-Robe, it's nobody anybody would know. I said, hey, man, you want to go to this club with me? Because I didn't know a lot of people in Miami. This might have been my first time ever at, at the improv. And he's like, all right. So we go, and we pull up, and there's not a big marquee in front of it. And I was going, huh. And it's not, definitely not on South Beach. It was just like in some neighborhood. And we walk in, and the guy at the door doesn't want to let us in. And he's like, no, 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 you got to have a girl with you. And I was like, huh? Well, I don't know. Keep in mind, I don't know the swing club at this time. So obviously, if you knew there was, if guys knew, especially in their twenties, which I was at this time, if twenty-year-old men know there's a swinger club out there, they're just gonna go in droves, and then you're gonna have five hundred dicks and like thirty women. <laughs> That's not a good ratio. So, and as I'm there, uh, the the owner, the the husband and wife come out, and they're like, "Hey, hey, Gary, 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 no, no, he's good, he's good, he's with us." So they let me in, and so we're sitting there, and we walk in, and it's just like there's a little dance floor. There's a bar to the right, and we're going, huh, all right. 
And I'm like, this is weird. It's not really crowded, but there's a lot of cars outside. And then, and keep in mind, we're also getting there at like 1.30, 2 in the morning. And they say, hey, we got, we got your drink. And it's like behind the bar, the guy has a bottle of Captain Morgan. And he goes, what do you drink with it? So then he pours me a drink. I go, that was weird. I thought I was going to have a section. There's no sections here. And my bottle is just sitting behind a bar. And then I see all these people in robes, like going over, going up these stairs uh, through this door. And I'm going, and I literally looked at the lady and I go, you guys got a pool here? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> and so she takes me to the left. Now keep in mind, everybody's right in front of me going up these stairs straight ahead. She takes me to the left and there's a, there's a pool, and as I look in the pool, this lady has got her top off, and she's just riding this dude. And I'm going, dang, she don't give a fuck. <laughs> and she said, Gary, you know what kind of club this is, right? I go, uh-uh. And she's like, it's a swinger club. And I go, shut up. And she goes, what do you think everybody's going upstairs in the rows for? I go, I thought there was a pool upstairs or something, jacuzzi. She was like, no, keep it. I'm so naive because I ain't been on the road that much at this point. And I'm I'm new to stand up. So, I mean, I'm new to like road life and stand up. So then she takes me in this locker room. So you go in the locker room and you it's men and women in the locker room. And you, you take off your clothes and you put on a robe. And then right before you leave with the robe, <laughs> right when you got the robe on, there's a bowl of of condoms. And you can grab your condoms. And she said, you want one? No, no, I'm good. And keep in mind, I'm like, there's no way I'm indulging. I'm I'm so overwhelmed at this point. Like, I'm just, I'm walking around with my mouth open. Like, I can't believe, I, I still don't believe I'm about to walk upstairs and see people have sex. Like, I don't believe it's going to happen. And so we go up the stairs, me and the opener. And, uh. There's like all these rooms and I, I poke my head into one. Like I won't walk in the room. Like I'm not walking in no rooms. I'm, I'm doing this. Like, you know, just like almost peeking in rooms. Right. And then this one guy comes behind me and he's like, Hey man, that's disrespectful. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you can't be peeking in. Man, it's got to walk in and watch. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I don't know. There's etiquette to this. So now I'm sitting there and I, my, I, my over went one way and I went the other. Right. <laughs> I just remember I'm watching and I'm just watching like every room it, it was a different level of what's going on like one room had like eight people on a bed another room just had four one might have three and I'm just going I'm just in awe and I'm in shock of everything I'm seeing and then I just remember I'm, I'm watching this one room and I'm literally like this I'm doing my eyes like to the right and left like anybody, anybody nobody gonna talk ain't nobody talking I mean, there's a lot of panting and moaning of the people that are banging each other, but everybody just watching like zombies. And then I'm like, I want to talk about this. <laughs> does, can any, does anybody want to share right now? And so I leave one room, go to another room. Nobody say nothing. Leave one room, go to another room. Nobody say nothing. And then uh, one guy asked me if I want to sleep with this woman. I said, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> And then I remember he like went off. He go, why you come here then? <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I was coming here. So anyways, it was funny because I'm there to like four or five in the morning and then breakfast showed up. I By the time I came downstairs, so I probably went upstairs, let's let's say 2.30. When I finally came down like at four or something after just having my head blown by every, not literally, but like literally just like my head's spinning. Like, I can't believe I just went here and saw all this stuff happen. I go downstairs. All of a sudden, like, this whole buffet gets brought in. Eggs, bacon. And you got all these people in robes now that just got done sleeping with each other. And they're all just talking, having some eggs, some bacon. Like, like it's nothing. Mimosas, Bloody Marys. I'm like, what the heck? And And, <laughs> and then I come to find out. My friggin' opener slept with the wife, the owner. I was like, there's no way. And he goes, yo. I was like, where'd you go? He goes, there's, there was a room downstairs. <laughs> I was like, yo, I didn't find this out until we're driving home or driving back to the hotel. And I'm just like, no way, dude. And then uh, uh, I just thought it was, and it was, uh, and people know me, it was 90% white and 10% Spanish. And there was two black people there and it was a husband and wife and why did they recognize me 
I was like, there's no way I'm indulging anything now. I can't have somebody like, oh my, I can't, uh, I just, I couldn't believe it. I was in awe of everything I saw that night. <laughs> it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version. It was just so much, especially it's your first time in Miami or one of the first times. And I'm, all I see is South Beach. And when you tell me club bottles, I think we're going to South Beach, VIP. I think we're getting taken care of. Uh, nah, nah, it was none of that. <laughs> and what's crazy is a husband and wife, I remained cool with them for years. They was both cool people. They ended up getting a divorce. And I wasn't, you know, it was years later I found out, but I was like, what? They were swingers. What? How would you get a divorce? For what? You, you, you cheated on them? You don't have to. You just got to share. You're, there's no real cheating. You just got to share. <laughs> I'm just going, if anybody, if you going to ask me if anybody was ever going to make it, I thought it would be them too. Because they're just, they were so open with everything. I just, I couldn't believe it. And they ended up getting divorced. I was in shock. Uh, but they were just good people, man. They were cool. They always come to my shows. They always bought tickets. They never asked for anything for free. Like that. They was like, they was fans before I really had a real fan base. And it was always cool. And then they'd always be asking me, like, you gonna you wanna come back to the club? I was like, no, nah, I'm straight. I'm good. That one time was enough for me at a at a at a swingers club. That was enough. Now, maybe if it was like a chocolate city swingers club, that might be different. Or maybe like swingers club where you wear a mask, like the Tom Cruise movie, uh, and nobody knows who you are. Maybe, but I just wasn't I wasn't there mentally at that stage. And I'm now nowadays I definitely wouldn't have. But I'm talking about in my twenties, would I have ever indulged? I go, that would be the only way. Wear a mask, or it was just chocolate heaven in there. And it definitely wasn't. It was vanilla sky. If we're talking about Tom Cruise movies. Uh so yeah, and it's not what you think. Like it's not like it was a bunch of bad chicks in there. Uh, I mean, eighty percent I was like, nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> so it's not what you think, trust, <laughs> even the med. I'm like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> and you got to realize for me, and I used to talk about this with my ex too. Uh, for me, I was like, I can't bring you or I got, I got standards. I can't. It's one thing if you're, you can't be bringing like a bad chick and then you, 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 you brought the baddest chick to the swingers club. And now, so everybody looking at you like, oh, you, you the top dog. So you're sleeping down. So that's not going to happen either. So I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not bringing the baddest one. So you, you, you bring your, you bring your lady that's a five and, you know, I'm bringing an eight and you're like, you get to sleep with an eight and I get to sleep with a five. Nah, I, I got the show on the stick on that end. So yeah, that was my one night at a swingers club. That was, that was a wild night. It was crazy. And the fact that my opener Slept with the owner. That was nuts. So anyways, uh, I didn't go over my schedule, uh, but I'm going to do it now. This weekend, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Pearl Theater inside the Palms. Uh, yeah, so I'm there this weekend. And tickets, are, it's almost gone. So I'd get them now. There's there's not a ton left. And hopefully, August 3rd through the 5th, I'm coming back to Philly. I hope that works out and, and I can make that up to them. Uh, I feel bad for the, like I said, I feel bad for the fans. I feel bad for the club. But, man, everybody has just been cool, honestly. Even even social media, which can be mean, which can be heartless. Even social media has been solid through it all. Like, you know, you don't read all the comments, but the ones I've seen. So hopefully I can do that. And then August 11th through the 13th, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky at the Louisville Comedy Club. And then August 18th through the 20th, Greensboro, North Carolina. September 1 through 3, Indianapolis, Indiana. And then September 8th through the 10, I'm in Buffalo, New York. So, uh, yeah, I always go to GaryOwen.live, and um, that's where my website is. Now, I, I like to do a movie review, but I didn't watch no movies this week. I was in the hospital. So I watched nothing. So maybe I can review John Q real quick. One of my favorite Denzel Washington movies. Uh, it's really good. His son has an enlarged heart, and it's it's all about how how insurance can get in the way of people getting the surgery they need. Eddie Griffin's in it. Uh, it's just go see John Q. It's really good. All, all you gotta do with Denzel watching movies and say is say Denzel Washington, 
and it's good. And Equalizer 3 is coming out soon. That's going to be bomb. So I didn't really see the movies. Like, I can't really like, do a good movie review this week. But, uh, yeah, if you ain't seen John Q, find it. It's got to be free by now on every platform that it's on. So And it's worth seeing if you ain't seen it. It's a great movie. Great, 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 great movie. Uh, you'll cry a little bit. I promise. It shows you what a dad would do for his son under extreme circumstances. Uh, and I think I think the movie's supposed to take place in Chicago, but I'm pretty sure they filmed it in Canada. Because when you're in the movie business, you notice certain landmarks. And I was like, that movie's in Canada, even though it's supposed to be in Chicago. I can I can tell by some of the scenery when the cops and ambulances are pulling up to the hospital. You see the downtown areas. I'm like, I think that movie's in Canada. I want to say Toronto or Montreal. Um, I'm going to look that up. And I'm going to come back to that next week and tell you if I'm right. So, all right, this is a crazy week, and hopefully this week's a lot calmer for me. But, uh, yeah, so good luck to all the running backs getting their money. Uh, no judgment here on Adam22 or his wife. I do think Jason Love uh, should, you know, ego got in the way, and you're bragging about. And talk about him kind of messing up the bag, too, because they were going to let him sleep with her again. And part two would probably be bigger than part one because look at this porn hub search of Adam 22 and his wife. So Jason love kind of, he kind of quote unquote fumbled his bag by letting his ego get in the way and talking smack. So yeah. So there goes that. All right, y'all. Uh, I'll see y'all next week. This is Gary. on with the get some podcast.